Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. For the past couple of days, I've been working on a brand new design. I've been wanting to come up with a fresh new design that would feature the 10 inch square layer cake. And here she is. I combined a fabric layer cake square with felt to create this angel Christmas ornament. The best part is that you can make three from one square of fabric. You can do this, so let's get started. This is a fabric layer cake, 40 10 inch coordinated squares in my favorite 2019 fabric collection, Snow Day by Moda. I feel like I haven't been giving the layer cake enough love. The best thing about the layer cake is that you can cut them into five inch squares and then <laughs> you have enough five inch squares to make as many of the charm pack angels as you would like. Uh, it's especially ideal for this kind of a print that's a scatter print because then you can turn them and take advantage of the pinked edge and always have the pinked edge on the hem. We will also use a 12 by 18 piece of felt. I'll put a supply list in the description box. So I will start with one 10 inch square. Then here's my felt. I have an eight inch square of Wonder Ender or Heat and Bond or whatever you want to use. It's the paper backed fusible web, an eight inch square. I will fuse this to the back of the layer cake like this. From the felt, I will cut an eight and a half inch circle from the felt. Okay, I'll be right back. Here's my circle of felt. And I fused the, um, the heat and bond to the back of the fabric. And then I cut out this seven and a quarter inch scallop circle with my die cutting machine. If you don't want to do that, you can just cut a plain old circle. It'll be just as cute. Now I'm going to peel off the backing and fuse this to the circle. This is fused and it's cooled off and now I'll do a decorative blanket stitch around the scalloped edge of the fabric. A uh, pro tip from Ruby is to um, switch the foot on your machine to an open-toed foot so that you can watch how your stitches are formed. And also always set your machine to stop with a needle down so that you can pivot around each one of these scallops. Here's my piece with the stitches. I, it's not perfect, but it turned out pretty well. Remember how I said we could make three projects, three angels from this? We're going to cut three wedges. I'll start by determining the center. I was thinking this kind of reminds me of a watermelon when I fold it in half. <laughs> Maybe that'll be another project another day. I think it's about right here. And then because I know I have 12 little scallops, I'm going to cut here and then one, two, three, four here and one, two, three, four here. Always cutting into the center so that I have three triangular sort of wedges. Don't be afraid. It's not that important. They don't have to be exactly the same. It's all right. Sometimes there might be a little bit more border on one or less border. It might be slightly off center. It's okay. We're going to fold this and stitch up the side. Turn it right side out and that'll become the angel's dress. Here we go. I folded this with the right sides together and I stitched up this seam, the straight side. I'm going to trim off the top and the bottom, maybe a little more of that seam allowance. And I'm actually going to also trim off the very tip of the point. And I was sure that I backstitched there. 
far lower than I, than I cut off. So that seam is secure. Then I'll turn it right side out. And from now on, I'm only going to work on one angel. But you know that you can get three out of the circle. I'm going to use this needle to pull out the tip. There we go. Nice. And I feel like I might have to poke a little bit to make sure that I can get through the tip there. I'm using my pointy embroidery scissors to do that. There we go. I think that'll work. Now for the next step, I have my six inch wide tool, my ribbon. Here's a face. I like to have these made ahead of time. You can check my focus on faces tutorial to make your own faces. I'm gonna cut off two pieces of tool. One length of 16th inch wide ribbon. Fold this in half. Tie it off in the center. Remember to make this, um, this ribbon nice and long because it ties off the center but it also becomes the hanging loop. Now I'm going to put these on a needle. I have this big needle. This will work. Poke it through the tip of the cone. Hopefully, yeah, it pulls right through. And then through the head bead from the bottom to the top. Pull it up nice and tight with the seam in the back. So her head, this is the front. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of glue here to the back and glue the head on, nice and secure. So her head slips down a little bit onto the tip of the cone. Then I'll tie that off, tie a knot in the ends, and then I'll trim off the excess tool. Sometimes I'd leave a little bit to show like a little petticoat. And she's looking really cute. The next thing to do is add a lace collar, and that helps with her stability on her head, too. I have a 12 inch length of half inch wide white lace, which I will gather up by hand and put around her neck. I'll use a doubled strand of quilting thread. Fold back the end. Secure the thread and just gather up the little running stitch through the edge of the lace. And cue music. There we go. Now I'll put this around her neck, tie it off in the back to secure, and I'll add a little bit more glue to make sure that her head isn't too wobbly. Distribute the fullness of the gathers so that she doesn't have one side more scrunched up than the other side. There we go, that looks good. And I'm gonna add a little bit of glue right there to help secure the thread and also to keep the head from wobbling. There we go. Now a piece of red and white baker's twine. Pull through here and tie into a knot just below her chin. I always use a generous length. You can always trim it off, but you don't want it too short. Tie a bow just like you're tying a shoe. The baker's twine has a tendency to twist and so I find that if I just don't manipulate it too much, it lays a little bit flatter. Trim off the ends and tie an overhand knot in the end of each streamer. And then to decorate below her chin, I have a couple of options. I think I'm gonna use one of these little flowers. These are from Hobby Lobby. I'll just put a little bit of glue on the back of that and glue it right there. Cute. 
Now it's time for her hair. I've chosen this auburn color. It's a nice contrast. This is Lion Brand Heartland acrylic. If I'm not making it clear, I did do a tutorial on this hair technique exactly like this. I think I'm going to do five loop, no, nah, four loops. I'll do four loops on either side. One, two, three, four. Then make an X right here. Trim a nice generous tail. Then send this all the way around. Pick up the first piece and tie it off in the center. So there's one bundle. Then I'll repeat for the second bundle. One, two, three, four. Make an X. Cut a second streamer. Go all the way around the center. Pick up the first piece and tie it off in the center, nice and tight. Those are just figure eight bows. I will start with the back by applying a circle of glue in the back of her head. Then I'll press the center of the bundle to the top and then press the loops into the back, covering the back of her head. This doesn't have to be perfect because there are some wings that'll go back there. And then the second bundle will be glued to the front. So I'm going to add some glue right here, starting right at the center. Then I'm going to push the bundle on. Like that. With a knot in the center. Then twist and press into the side. I need to get some glue right here. So I'll twist and press. Nice. And then repeat for the other side. Apply a line of glue right here and twist and press. And twist and press. And there we go. Now she needs a halo. Halo is just a two inch length of this 20 gauge wire maybe two and a half. I'll shape it around my thimble and then I'll apply some glue to the ends and then I'll glue it into her hair like a hairband. Kind of. <laughs> okay, now she needs her wings. For the wings, I use this um, thin, stiff kind of felt and I'm going to cut out a scallop circle, a three inch scallop circle. But if you don't have a die cutting machine, you can just cut out a three inch circle. I'll be right back. Here's my three inch scallop circle. Now I'll fold it in half like this. And then I'm going to do a little decorative stitch about a quarter of an inch in from the scalloped edge. I'm going to use this turquoise blue thread. That's what I have in the machine and I think it'll be great. There's my little decorative stitch and here's another pro tip from Ruby. Um, you want to leave those ends, those thread ends, and then you can sort of tie them together so that your decorative stitches won't come undone. Now this will be glued to the back of her head. There we go. And she's done. So cute. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.